Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace. This is episode four of five in our dinosaur series. We've talked a little bit about how dinosaurs were first discovered, what makes something a dinosaur, fossil hunting and the economics of fossil hunting. Today though, are we ever gonna see dinosaurs again? Are you gonna be able to go to an amusement park, you know, like the Triassic Park or something? <laughs> Clever name. You're not, I'm sorry, you're just not. We've all heard different theories about how dinosaurs met their end, but they met their end so long ago that you're never gonna see a clone. So what happened is essentially this. 65 million years ago, the most prevalent extinction theory is that something hit the Earth, a cosmic impact. This is at the end of the Cretaceous, or what's called the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction Event, often known as KT. At the end of the KT, all that was left was birds. The big dinosaurs, they ran out of food. They didn't have anything to eat because everything was dead. The only thing that could survive were small scavengers, which didn't need a lot of food. And of course, uh, the ancestors of us mammals, you know, we were there as well. But birds, which could fly and survey for food, they survived. And the little teeny scavengers, which could run around and like eat, survive on just little bits of food. That's why creatures are smaller today than they were pre-dinosaur. You know, they didn't have chances to evolve into these giant creatures again. The idea of a cosmic impact is essentially coming down to either a comet or an asteroid hit us. That was first proposed by physicist Luis Alvarez and his son, geologist Walter Alvarez. Scientists found today signs of this collision, and they think it was near the town of Chicxulub in Mexico. It's a gargantuan crater more than 110 miles wide. That's huge. The explosion, if that was the one, would have released as much energy as 100 trillion tons of TNT, more than a billion times more powerful than the atom bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's a huge explosion. An explosion like that changes the face of the planet. Of course, this is science, so there's controversy over the timing of the Chicxulub impact. Findings using high-precision radiometric dating analysis of the debris from the impact show that the KT event and the Chicxulub collision happened no more than about 33,000 years apart. That's pretty close, geologically speaking, over millions of years, right? According to geochronologist and director of the Berkeley Geochronology Center in California, Paul Rene, we've shown the impact and the mass extinction coincided as much as one can possibly demonstrate with existing dating techniques. It's gratifying to see these results for those of us who've been arguing for a long time that there was an impact at the time of the KT mass extinction. It of course could be said that the cosmic impact and the mass extinction only coincided and they weren't the 100% of the story. Obviously, there are other reasons that the life on Earth that existed at that time could have died. A study led by geologists from Princeton uh, report that there were precise dates for these uh, Deccan traps in India. They were basically mountain high piles of basalt lava flows, which could cover as much area as the entire country of France. That was 66 million years ago. Also roughly the same time as the dinosaur extinction, which could have also set off environmental changes, which eventually helped kill off the dinosaurs. No one's saying that the cosmic impact and these uh, Deccan traps are mutually exclusive, however they could have all contributed to this mass extinction. In the end, all of those things happened 65 million years ago-ish, give or take a few million years. That is too far in the past to take that DNA and then clone it using our techniques. We can clone extinct animals, animals that existed more recently, you know. If the rhino goes extinct, we could potentially clone more rhinos. However, it wouldn't work with dinosaurs. Let me explain why. DNA is the building block of life. You know, it, it tells cells how to divide, it tells them how to multiply, it builds the whole body plan of every organism. It's billions upon billions of pieces of data. And when an organism dies, the soft tissues is where the DNA lives, and they break down and are eventually destroyed. But it's not just the tissues where the DNA is, it's also the DNA itself that degrades, it breaks down. In some cases, parts of dead animals and plants are buried and preserved as fossils in such a way that the soft tissues are preserved, but even if you can extract DNA from well-preserved fossils, which has been done, 
they're only small sections of DNA. It's not a whole DNA molecule. And without the whole molecule, you can't just throw frog DNA in there and call it good. Short segments of fossilized DNA give us valuable information about the relationship of an extinct animal to a modern living relative, but not enough information to take that DNA and clone the animal. But even if dinosaur genomes were available, like let's say we could clone a dinosaur, which we can't because they died too long ago. Even if they were available, where would you put a dinosaur? What would it eat? How would you raise one? Do they live in a herd? Do they live alone? Do they need to hunt? Do they need to do certain things? Do they need to eat certain things in order to survive? We don't know. We've never been able to see a living dinosaur. Without an ecosystem to support this ancient creature, and remember, most things died during the KT mass extinction, we wouldn't be able to help this dinosaur survive. We wouldn't know what enzymes it needed. We wouldn't know what nutrients it needed. Modern plants, you couldn't just put one out in a field and say like, go eat a tree. Modern plants are different than the plants from the period of the Cretaceous. Modern plants have evolved defenses against most herbivores today, and that includes toxins which could impair an animal that hasn't adapted to them. Think of it like aliens who encounter disease. If you took ancient people and you brought them forward, our flu might kill them, and vice versa. Even if you could clone a dinosaur, it might be harder to have them live here than it was to have them live at the end of the Cretaceous. So even if we could bring them back, which we can't, they'd probably all die anyway because they wouldn't be able to live in the modern world. It's hard, you know, in the 21st century. Is there another way that we could bring back animals that could survive? Yeah, there is. And we're gonna talk about it tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. So make sure you come back for our last episode in our series on dinosaurs, which I'm pretty sure is gonna blow your mind. It's super incredible. Thanks for watching. Why don't you let us know down in the comments if you could go back and see the dinosaurs, you know, like go back in time and see the dinosaurs, where would you want to go? Like what dinosaurs would you want to see? Let us know. And thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. Make sure you come find the show on Twitter. You can find us at Test Tube. You can also find me at Trace Dominguez. Thanks for watching. Wow.